Hi, my name is Fede, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use Progressive Blur in play. The first thing we are going to do is to see real life examples of how or in where Progressive Blur is being used. Apple uses it in different areas or parts of iOS. The first example is the app library. Here, you can see that this search bar, it's blurring its contents underneath. At the top, it's blurring them completely. But at the bottom, you can see that it's slowly blurring them as the user scrolls. The second example is the dynamic island, and it follows a similar strategy. The dynamic island life activities expand and they blur all the things underneath it, in this case, in the home screen of the iPhone. This example creates a nice sense of depth, telling the user that the dynamic island is on top of the rest of the content. The last example is Apple Maps, and this is more subtle, but you can see here in the status bar that Apple is using progressive blur. As you're panning and going to different locations in the maps, it's going to blur what's underneath and it creates this really nice effect when you're going to forests, parks, or anything green. Apple also uses Blur to create gesture-based interactions. As you can see in the home screen of your iPhone, you can pan down to search with the spotlight. As you're moving your finger up and down, it slowly blurs the home screen. Now let's move on to the different types of Blur that Play offers. We offer three types of Blur as of now, Material, Layer Blur, and Progressive Blur. We are only going to cover progressive blur in this video, but just so you know, we're going to make specific videos for both material and layer blur. To add blur to an object in play, you need to select it, and then you need to uh, scroll down in the attributes panel where you're going to find the blur panel. You can turn it on, and you can see that we have the different types of blur. We have material, we have layer blur, and we have progressive blur. You can see here, that I can adjust the intensity or the radius of this specific blur, and I can modify other properties such as the intensity map and the invert property that we're going to see in a minute. Now that we know what progressive blur is and how to use it, I'm going to show you a real life example, creating a car that has this nice effect. One thing to take in consideration, as we saw in the iOS examples, is that blur is usually above the content. So we need to think about that when we create a car. In this case, I have this car here, and you can see that the photo is part of the stack, and the bottom blur, it's a layer above it. And that's why I'm modifying, or I need to take care of the CDEF in the case that there is content underneath. So how do we create a car like that? I'm going to press S, and I'm going to create this car here. I'm going to press I to add an image. And I'm going to right click here to do fill, so it fills the entire container. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to select one of the images that I already have in my assets panel. Now, if I add another stack to create this blur effect, given the fact that this stack is vertical, it's going to be right after the image. And we don't want this because we want the blur effect to apply to the image. So with this second stack selected, I'm going to pin it to the bottom left of the stack. And then you see that it has the C depth set to 10, while the image here has it set to zero. So this means is above it. So with the stack selected, I'm going to go into the blur layer, and then I'm going to turn on progressive blur. And you can see that right away, it's starting to apply that to the image. So I can, for example, modify the height of this specific stack that is blurring the screen and you can see that it creates that night effect so for example if we let the height to be something like this i'm going to modify the radius and i can control the intensity of that blur that it's above the photo and then i can change the different types that we're going to see in a second and choose the one that i like the most and that's how you create a car with a photo and then a progressive blur on top of it. In the last part of this video, I want to talk about the intensity map. The intensity map is a property of the progressive blur that is really similar to how gradients work. For example, we have the vertical progressive blur that goes from top to bottom. We have the horizontal blur that goes from left to right. We have the radial and we have the angular. So as I said, it's pretty similar to gradients. 
Now there is a trick. You can select any blur and then you can go into the blur panel and you can see there is this invert property. And that means that if by default the vertical intensity map is top to bottom, it's going to go to bottom and top. And if it starts on left to right by default, by turning on invert, it's going to go from right to left. That's all for this video. We hope you like it. In the next video, we're going to cover how to create interactions that have progressive blur. Thank you for watching.